Hello Junior Church and welcome to the second Sunday of Advent. Now last week we had a look at how God had set the scene for Jesus' birth in the Old Testament through prophets like Isaiah. And as you can probably tell from behind me, since we spoke last week, church has also been setting the scene with these beautiful Christmas trees getting ready for Christmas Day. Now Isaiah in his prophecies just gave people little bits of information that God told him to, a bit like a film trailer, to get people excited for his rescue mission and to give people hope. And one of these prophecies said this, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And the people were excited. I mean there were about 150 of these prophecies about Jesus in the Old Testament and this information was written down and it was passed from generation to generation and we can still read this today in our Bibles. Now 700 years after Isaiah said this message um, there lived a girl called Mary. Here she is. She would have been a lot bigger than this. <laughs> So she was a Jew and she would have also known this same scripture that we read today. She knew about God's promise. She would also have been waiting for this child, uh, for this wonderful counsellor, for this mighty God, everlasting father and prince of peace. She was waiting for God's promise to come true. And what do we know about God's promises? Yes they always come true. But what's really exciting about Mary is that she probably didn't realize that she was also mentioned in one of Isaiah's prophecies. You can look this up in Isaiah 7, 14. It talks about a girl who is going to become pregnant. She will bear a son and she will name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So exciting, she was in it, but she didn't know it. So what do we know about Jesus' mother, Mary? Let's have a little look. Now, you might recognise this stained glass window from church. It is a beautiful scene of the nativity. And uh, in the middle, we have Mary with Jesus sat on her knee and then Joseph next to her. So what do we actually know about Mary from the Bible? Well, we know that she lived in Nazareth and that she was engaged to a man called Joseph, who was a carpenter. Now, in those times, it was normal for girls who were around age 14 to get married. So we think that Mary was around that age. Now, maybe you were around this age, or you might have an older sister or a cousin who's around 12 to 14, and it seems a bit strange to us now. But then girls in that culture, they didn't go to school. So it was very normal in those times that once they became a teenager, that they would settle down and get married and start and to have a family. So let's have a look at the story. Now our story starts with an angel appearing to Mary. Pretty cool. So we know it's gonna be a good story. A messenger comes directly from God to talk to Mary, to tell her what's going to happen. So while you watch this, what I'd like you to do is have a think. Have a think how a 12 or 14 year old girl would feel as she heard this message from God. And what about her fiance, Joseph? This was big news for him too. Have a look at the story and we'll chat again afterwards. The story of Christmas, Mary and Joseph. This is Mary. Hi. You see, Mary was the mother of Jesus but before that happened, she lived in the town of Nazareth. Mary had no children because she lived according to God's law <laughs> and had never been married. Oops. But she was engaged to marry a man named Joseph. Hey -o. Hi, Joseph! One day, an angel came to Mary and said, Hi that God had chosen Mary. The angel said, God is with you. But Mary was afraid and confused. Huh? She wondered what the angel was talking about. Then the angel said, don't be afraid. God loves you and wants to use you in a great way. Uh, me? You will give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and he will be the king forever. Mary asked, but how can this happen? 
for she was not married yet and knew that she couldn't have a child until she was married. But the angel told Mary that the Holy Spirit would make her pregnant. Wow! So that the baby born will be holy and will be called the Son of God. Wow! The angel reminded her that nothing is impossible with God. Eh, okay, let's do this! So Mary decided to trust God and all that he had planned for her. Before their wedding, Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant. Wait, what? He thought she had done something wrong. Uh. But Joseph was a man of God and decided to break off the engagement quietly so no one around town would think badly of Mary. While Joseph was thinking about all this, an angel appeared to him in a dream. Oh. Uh, hi? The angel said, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Huh, what? The angel explained that Mary's baby was from God. Wait, what? The angel told Joseph that the baby's name would be Jesus, and he would save his people from their sins. Oh, wow. And when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel told him. Uh, hi. You ready? Really? and took Mary as his wife, while she was still pregnant with the Son of God. And so Joseph and Mary trusted in God, and the two followed the plan that God had given them to help bring the Savior into the world. When the angel Gabriel visits Mary, as shocking as it must have been for her, maybe something of what she knew about Isaiah's prophecy suddenly started to make sense. In that first conversation they have with each other, Gabriel tells her that she is the girl that we read about in Isaiah 7, that she has been chosen by God, that she is the one who is going to have God's son. Now I think Mary and Joseph showed that they were people of great courage. Do you know, we can see that they love God, we can see that they trusted him. And even though they knew that people were gonna talk about them, that people were gonna give them funny looks, they trusted God and they knew that this was the right thing to do. I think they were really, really brave people. Well, it looks like we might have some people to add to our nativity scene this week. Now, last week, as part of our Advent craft, we invited you to make a manger and a stable and a star. And this was to set the scene for the nativity. And we're gonna build this up week by week as we talk about different characters in the story. Now, Art, you can use whatever you have in the house to make these things. So we have used a biscuit box, some other boxes we had lying around in the recycling, and a toilet roll manger, and a star that we found in our craft box. But we have seen some amazing designs from you guys, so please keep them coming in. We are loving looking at them, and you'll see some of them at the end of this video. Now, over to Shauna to tell you what three things you need to make this week. Over to you, Shauna. Okay, good morning Junior Church and welcome back to our nativity scene. So we've been talking about Mary today um, and we're going to add her to our scene. So remember what I said last week now this is just my version and this is just an example but you can do it however you want. But I thought I was going to make it really simple and we're going to take a little triangle and this is Mary. This is her body anyway. So we're going to add Mary to the scene. So there she is in the in the stable. And here's Joseph, because you know he was there too. So we're going to add Joseph into next to her. Oh, because I reckon you know he has to be there to help her, didn't he? Now I thought it would be quite fun to have a little think about how you think Mary and Joseph were feeling at this time because you know I bet that they were feeling all sorts of different emotions um so I've got a little smiley face now do you think Mary was feeling happy right now hmm maybe I reckon Joseph was probably feeling pretty well, he looks quite ter terrified, doesn't he? Um, maybe a little bit surprised, a little bit anxious of what was going to happen. 
Mary probably wasn't really feeling extremely happy at this point. Maybe she was feeling a little bit, ooh, a little bit nervous, a little bit, what's going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it would be fun. Just have a little think. And these faces are really easy. So you can just um, add them to your picture too. Now, Mary and Joseph got to Bethlehem and they had to go quite a long way to get there. So they didn't have cars or transport like we do, but they did have a donkey. So we're going to add our donkey in as well at this point. Now, like I said, you can do it however you want, but I'm going to show you how to um, make a little paper donkey. So I've cut out a circle for its body and he's just going to stand there next to Joseph because, you know, I reckon he was quite good friends with Joseph. And then we've got his head, which is an oval shape that I just cut out. There he is. <clears throat> okay. Now, he is going to need some legs, obviously. So, I've cut out two little legs. Yeah. I'm going to add them on. So, otherwise... Be a little bit of a wonky donkey, wouldn't they? <laughs> I wonder if like they named their donkeys like we name our dogs. <laughs> Do you think they named their donkey? I wonder what Mary would have named her donkey. I reckon we're going to have to name this one Wonky. So I've cut out some ears for our donkey. They were just like a kind of oval shapes, but with a little bit of a tip on them. So there's the donkey says, this is so fiddly. I'm going to have to glue all this down as well. So he doesn't fall, fall off. Right, and our donkey is going to need a nose because otherwise it's not going to be able to breathe, is he? So I've made my nose by, I just cut out like a little circle and then I did a little cut in this bit. And then I'm going to put it at the bottom of his snout. There we go. Uh, and also, what else does our donkey need? I think he's going to need some eyes to see, isn't he? So I've just cut out two little circles with dots on them. And I'm just going to try and put them on our donkey. Oh, there we go. There he is, Wonky the donkey. <laughs> junior church i reckon you're going to be um doing a much better job than i am right now um and it's really lovely to see all your little masterpieces me and julie are loving seeing them so please keep sending them to us um and now we have a bit more of our scene that is coming together we have mary and joseph and our wonky donkey so if you join me again next week we're going to be adding some more things in and i will see you then bye We've added Mary, Joseph, and the donkey. Well, we've only got one more thing to make, but we've got a Joseph and we've got a Mary as well. And look at Mary. She's having a baby. She's got a baby bump. <laughs> She's brilliant. I'm going to pop her in there too. Well, have a wonderful week, Junior Church. Enjoy getting crafty. We can't wait to see your designs. And may God bless you and your families this week. And God bless your schools too and all of your teachers who are working so hard. We'll see you next week. Bye.